Hi everyone, this is Diane. Thank you for coming to my channel today. And I showed you a finished journal yesterday, which I put in my shop yesterday evening. And today I'm going to show you another finished journal, which will be in my shop this evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that would be Thursday, August 3rd. Um, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this journal will be in my shop. This is a 1940s or 50s uh, cookbook recipe journal. I used a new cover. I read this book and um, probably would never read it again. So I loved the cover design and it was just the right size for making a journal. So here it is. Um, I'm going to share with you that the journal kit that I used is something like retro recipe journal or something like that. But this is the Etsy shop. It's all lowercase letters and it's by Lullabelle. And I will link it below. So here is the book cover. It measures five and three quarters by nine and a half. And I didn't make the cover, I didn't do the spine or anything until after I had my signatures put together. And I had to add a quarter of an inch to my normal two inch spine. So it's two and a quarter inches. This is the cover from a paperback cookbook from Hamilton Beach for this mixer. And I just added some embellishments to it, some vintage fabrics, new fabrics. This one's new, I believe. And um, vintage linen, a real milk bottle cap, and some vintage buttons, some vintage rickrack. I used a um, hitch fastener and a hair tie. And on the spine is just a piece of new fabric and then this was cut from a vintage tablecloth. In a happy mail some time ago I received a lot of pieces that were cut from this same tablecloth. So I just trimmed it up and thought it was a good fit for this because of all the blue. She's got yellow in her apron so I went with blue and yellow for the cover. And this is what the back looks like. I added some rickrack and just a little strip of fabric to kind of carry over this fabric collage. I did make a bead dangle and you guys don't know how much I struggle doing this. I've told you before I don't enjoy it. <coughs> and I really struggled today. I kept dropping you know with my little pliers and trying to work it all out and I would drop stuff and try to find it. And anyway we got it done and I thought it was interesting to use this piece of an old necklace if I can untangle it here. This piece right here was the dangly part on the back of an old necklace and the strands of beads would have been attached on these three loops. And I thought that this was probably a necklace from this era. So I just added a um, jump ring and attached it to my, my ring here. Oh, sorry. So it, I just attached the whole thing like that. And then I made some bead dangles in blues, greens, yellows. So there's that. There are three signatures. I used this piece of scrap paper that I think looks like wallpaper that you might find in a kitchen. And I added this label so you can write your name there. And I had a lot of fun using vintage items and some newer items too and some digitals. I added this really pretty lace from Hobby Lobby on the front edge of each signature. This is of course from a vintage magazine and it's about Scott Towels. And I loved that as a tuck spot. So I tucked in a recipe card from one of the larger ones. And this advertisement. Now this is a from a more recent book, but it's a reproduction of a vintage foil advertisement. Backed it with cardstock. Actually, yeah, I guess I did want it like that. And I did some stenciling on the white sides of the scrapbook papers. This is a vintage canning label 
or freezer label or something from current catalog. I have them in a lot of different styles. And I stamped the mixer there. I clipped a lot of things to the pages using my homemade paper clips. These are all made from vintage images. And this is a recipe page from a different cookbook. From the cookbook that was supposed to be on this cover that I lost. And so with this I clipped in some price labels and this digital lady who is serving looks like some meat and potatoes. And so you can use them in the journal wherever you would like. This is a ledger page, a vintage ledger. I added some vintage embroidered trim. And this is a digital, what's cooking. And so some of the digitals like this and some apron ladies, they're from KB and Friends. This is uh, one of the pages from the Lullabelle digital kit. And here's one of the KB and Friends apron ladies. This is a vintage shelf liner, and it wasn't used. I'm not sure where that staining came from, but I got a selection of these shelf liners at the flea market last year or the year before, and um, I, I don't mind that stain on it. You know, I didn't have to use that piece. I had others I could use, but I don't mind that. It just looks like it came out of a kitchen. And then paper clipped on this side with this ear of corn is, uh, I think this was part of a scrapbook paper recipe card. And then this vintage um, kitchen hacks kind of a card. So it's it was in a box full of household hints and tips. So there's several tips there for the kitchen. The household, the box contained hints for, you know, the garden and other parts of the house too, but I just used some kitchen ones in here. This is a 1955 calendar with recipes that I just got at the flea market. So I was able to use these in the, uh, use some pages in the two recipe journals that I made. So there's some recipes there. <clears throat> I had to fold it in so that I wouldn't have to cut any of it off. And I added this image from a vintage magazine. This is a piece of um, cotton stationery. Really nice quality paper. Just some scraps of vintage fabric there. And this is a library pocket that's not vintage. I think it was made for scrapbooking and I had added this scrapbooking paper that has measurement equivalents on it and this vintage ad. I had already, I had this in my stash, it was all done. And this card came with the envelope. There's a handwritten recipe in, in behind it for maple oatmeal muffins and then this recipe card with carrots on it. Some stenciling there. Two ledger pages that are smaller, different colors. This came off of a vintage um, apron pattern, so that's a genuine vintage piece. And from an old magazine, the peas. And this book is, this page here is vintage also. It came out of a real heavy binder, and, the, and these are heavy pages. I love the where it looks like um, there are eyelets and bows in the center. This is the backing paper that went with this um, digital kit. I think there's more than one backing paper. What did I use here? Yeah, it's different. They all have the ribbons on the on both sides. I thought they were really cute. That was one of the selling features for me, just that detail. Here's the back side of that paper that came out of that old um, binder, and I put a fabric cluster on it. It's 
some digital elements. And this is a digital of some more apron ladies. This, those are not KB and friends. Here I just used a regular paper clip and added this because I just wanted this to be in the journal. I loved it. Love the color. And this is something I just took out of a 1950s Woman's Day magazine. Your young man will sprightly turn to springtime fancy cake made with Dexo 100% pure vegetable shortening. And I backed it with coffee dyed paper. Just folded it up so you can clip it here and take it off and write on it. These are some vintage price labels that were unused. I got a bunch of them at a flea market. And I just don't use them, so I'm going to start using them. I had some stickers that I think I got in a Happy Mail. So I used a few of those, and I'm going to include the rest of them with this journal along with some extras because I have so much stuff for cookbooks. So I have, I'll probably include some recipe cards. Oh, you know what I didn't include? I didn't include any of these. So I'm gonna make sure I put some of them in here. I wanna put one in each signature, I think. Those are die cuts from I believe from the 1960s, and it was from the uh, National Dairy Council. They're food cutouts with nutritional information on the back. Well, let's see. Let's put some baked ham in here. See, it's got nutritional information there. Okay. Then there is, I made a little pocket with this part of the ledger with that same blue trim. And this was just a vintage notebook um, sheet of paper and I added this that came out of a vintage magazine or recipe book. Here is another paper clip that I made with Kraft mayonnaise. And I included some more things that you can use throughout the book. There is uh, a toaster ad that I used as a pocket or something and this was cut off it so I included that you can use it wherever you'd like and this part of an ad it was two whole pages of this and I thought it was so cool it's very fragile but this piece was left over I'd cut something off it and uh, some blue stamps And on this side, well, I made a pocket with that same um, page with all the goods that are stocked on the shelves. Bisquick, Royal Instant Pudding, Jello, Minute Rice, Campfire Marshmallows. I remember when they came in a box, uh, we would get only get the campfire ones when we went camping. And we had them in a box for a while when I was really little. Uh, I remember them in the box. Peter Pan, Peanut Butter. Borden chocolate syrup. Looks like it's in a glass and sunmade raisins. There's a little booklet here for food old as old as the hills yet ever new. Save it by canning in cur jars. Whoops. Well, I probably used some of those pages in a previous project, but you get the rest of them. There's a really some pretty artwork of some more jars with their produce inside them. I think the artwork on that is really pretty. And then this was cut off of something else. And I like the pastel colors. Here's one of my stamps. It says menu. This is part of a towel. I loved the stripes, the colors of those stripes. I remember I found that at the flea market. I think it was earlier this year. And I think the colors of this yo-yo go well with that and with this page. Here's the toaster ad I mentioned. And I just added a piece of fabric to it. And this is from a cookbook that you could, it was a blank cookbook, and you could write your recipes on it. Second signature, I love 
this. This is my favorite page. It's got pink gingham on it. And when I saw this ad, I think this one just came out of my 1950s Women's Day magazines that my friend Valerie gave me. And I think that I just cut this out of one of those. But the colors are so pretty. I love the pastels. And it, I had to put it with this pink gingham cardstock. So I backed it onto a mint green cardstock and glued it on. And it was centered better than it looked. And I added this, um, then it looks, and let me just explain. <laughs> I added this eyelet trim and I added the pink ribbon through it and then made a bow and glued it on. And then it was all full to the bottom and then this space was empty. So I had it looking more centered until I added this part. But I added this K & Company sticker border strip to the top and that helped. But you could get right inside your Aunt Jemima cake mix, you would get one of these Mother Goose spoons. You didn't have to send away from them, for them. You just got the spoon inside your Aunt Jemima cake mix. And then I made this a pocket, and this is a Kellogg's menu card from the 1940s. Oh, that's okay. That's another label there. And a stamp. And with this paper clip, I used Baker's Coconut. And I just added three of these labels onto that baking recipe book page. The ledger paper with a piece of pink embroidered ribbon and some blue stamps. This is another shelf liner and another K KB and Friends digital lady. And this is a bowl of salad and it looks like she's holding a bowl of salad. So. That's why I put her there. There's a drumstick, a fried chicken drumstick on a paper clip. And I made this with one of the labels and just a piece of paper and another of those kitchen cards. And the calendar has a journal card you can write on. This one has a piece of fabric that's vintage. This is a digital. It might be from Raspberry Road. I already had it printed. And there's a place card. It's made out of a really nice paper that almost feels handmade. Recipe card, and then this image that I got from, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. But it's an apron pattern. I'm looking for a place to add another food element. This stamp set is made is for making recipe cards and it has different food categories. <clears throat> but I just took the decorative food category squares and stamped three of them here. Snacks, soup, and dessert. Some more of those stickers, ledger paper, digital page. I had talked about adding a wallpaper envelope in the middle, but I didn't. It was already pretty full. There's a vintage fabric scrap and a cutout from a, a book, whole wheat flour. I made this library card packet with ledger paper and a digital image and just did a little fabric and a postage stamp collage there on the card. This is a genuine vintage orange juice bottle cap. Well, I don't think this is a short pocket because I put it above the um, element here, the shelf liner, so I can't put the banana in here, I don't think. I'll put something smaller in there. But this is a sheet from a loyalty stamp book. This is from a vintage magazine. And I don't know, I think that that's a stamp. I stamped that on a scrap of scrapbook paper and this is a piece of bias tape. 
I had made this tag a while ago out of a collage sheet. It's all uh, recipes that were collaged onto a cardstock piece and I cut them into tags. And this I cut out of a vintage magazine and glued it to cardstock. So I think this is the pocket where I'm going to add the banana. Oh, I can do it back here. Not the banana, but the piece of fruit or food. And that's perfect because of the color. Okay, we'll get back to that. It says hors d'oeuvres. There's some red loyalty stamps. This one has a piece of shrimp and some peas. And it's holding on a vintage recipe card, handwritten. Um, Pop in the oven stew, it's called. And a couple more pieces from the advertisement. You can use those wherever you like, and some green stamps. Then inside this pocket is a vintage pancake syrup label. This is actually real. I bought it at uh, an antique an antique mall and put it on cardstock. Added this vintage uh, rickrack, and I love the blue and the yellow together. This is a tag that I purchased, I think, at Hobby Lobby, and a vintage ad for Brillo Brillo, Brillo pads. Because after we cook, we have to wash the dishes. So, because of that bright yellow, I'm going to tuck this banana in there, peeking out. I stamped this pie. It says home cooking. This is a vintage tablecloth. That was a towel. This is a tablecloth. And I had made this recipe, or tag, with a handwritten recipe there, and this fruit plate that was cut out of an old magazine. This came off of a scrapbook paper. I tied some lace inside of that hole there. And the last signature, we have this lady with all of her canned goods lined up so neatly behind her, and she uses Kerr jars. This was in a magazine, and she's putting some of her preserves or whatever, her fruit, on top of some angel food cake, looks like. And this was in my stash, already made. I had embossed this large tag and added this apron lady from a vintage pattern so she is another actual vintage apron pattern lady and I think that there was something cut out of her right here like she overlapped some something overlapped her looks like she only has one leg but there's her other foot she just has her legs lined up one in front of the other um, so I glued this there to hide where it was cut into and to make it so you could write on it, because this was all embossed, I added, it's not just coffee dyed paper, it's coffee dyed cardstock, so you can write easily on that. There's another stamp and another label. And here I used some salad ingredients on a paper clip and added this piece from a 1952 cookbook, little booklet. So you can cut that and use it for something. And a little flashcard and a little tiny strip of, of a shelf liner. That was a scrap I had left over. And there's another embroidered trim. Another shelf liner with a spatula that's a digital from Raspberry Road. And I used this Pillsbury uh, logo on a paper clip. And this is a recipe card from KB and Friends. And another kitchen card, two of them. There's a flash card, some more stickers, another milk bottle cap. This one is Elmwood Dairy Milk Pasteurized Homogenized. Newport, New York, with a couple of pieces of fabric. This is a vintage uh, plum pudding label from Heinz. 
I don't know when Heinz made plum pudding, but that was an old label that must have come in a box of recipes that I got. And this was the, the, the piece that was left. That's the full piece that I had. And I wanted to back it with cardstock and make a pocket out of it. So I embossed this cardstock and rubbed some ink over it, glued this piece on, and then just gently cut a curve to kind of match this curve to make it a fun pocket. And there's another scrapbooking page recipe card and a recipe card that I made. This is a genuine Victorian ephemera right here old recipe book and a stamp. If I don't find another place to add some food, a food card, I'll come back to this one. This is another digital from Raspberry Road. And I just glued it to that gingham cardstock. Another recipe card and a Betty Crocker recipe card. There's the ledger paper. Another apron lady. Just glued some fabric on that page. There's a little sticker up there that says let's bake. And it has a canister of flour and sugar. Simply delicious. That's from KB and Friends. From a vintage cookbook booklet especially for the girls. It wasn't really a booklet. It was one of those um, good good housekeeping recipe book libraries. And I had the whole collection that I bought at the flea market. And they, these, they had these kinds of illustrations in them. This is from a 6x6 scrapbooking paper. I think this would be a good place to add. Um... Some dinner rolls. And this is a glassine bag with a digital lady and some loyalty stamps. And this is just a piece of coffee dyed paper. I just added a little fabric to the top and cut it into the right size. There's a digital. This is from Raspberry Road, that old fashioned bowl. I wish I could tuck these right in here. You know, if I wanted to take the time and be all clever, I could have cut a slit in there and made that work, but they go behind. This is a recipe card. Really cute with a patchwork edge. And this is a leftover from a scrapbook paper or... Yeah, it was cut apart from a scrapbook paper. Here we have a Swan's Down Cake Flower paper clip. So I think there are at least two paper clips in every signature of these kind of paper clips. And there's a brown label sticker. And then this I made with my Cricut a long time ago. So you can add that to a page somewhere. Or you could just journal on the back. clip on first. And I made this pocket just so that I could use the Wesson oil can because I loved it so much. And that's just a little strip, strip of leftover paper that I had and I wanted something to reinforce the top of that paper. This is a digital paper that came with the junk journal kit that I used. So it was just printed on paper, not cardstock. and. I added that to fortify it. This is a typed recipe for devil's food cake. This was in that binder recipe journal that I just made. So it's from the 40s probably. And there's a recipe card with some peaches. I stamped a spatula and a spoon and a whisk on that page. And this is another apron piece and this is actually the apron pocket. And I made this on a video while I was working on the binder journal. I love the way this one turned out. So this is an older image than the 50s. It's from the 40s. And they're canning tomatoes. And this is a vintage label. 
I forgot to put some of those vintage labels in this book, so I'll include a few of those in your pack that you get, and you can put them wherever you want. And I said that I would probably put this pocket on the back cover. So I did. It fit very nicely there. And this is another image that I cut from one of those good housekeeping little cookbooks from that library. Just glued it to cardstock, tucked it in there, and this is from KB and Friends. Eat your vegetables. This is cut from a cardstock from a paper pad left over a couple of the labels you can use wherever you want a little digital that I think came with this kit and a Mazzola corn oil image from an old magazine it's backed onto cardstock so what fun so there you go this is complete and it will be in my shop at 6 p.m. This evening, Wednesday, August, no, Thursday, August 3rd. And I will include some extra things as I mentioned. So you can just follow the link to my shop and uh, set your timer so you don't forget to come and watch for this journal to be uh, become live on my channel. Hopefully it'll go quickly. Whoops. I better find where that came off. I think it came. Must have come off that, but I don't know why. Well, I will fix that, and then we'll be all set with this journal. I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you're having a creative day today. Bye bye.